Hello and welcome. This is the first video from the Avastar reference series. Today I will step through the creation of a mesh character, a character which is fully based on the second life avatar. I will show you how to create the initial character, and how to use the Avastar shape sliders to modify the character shape. Then we will export the character as a Kalata file, and finally import the character to second life. I assume that you have already installed a recent version of Blender, and that the Avastar add-on for Blender is also available on your computer. If you have not yet installed Avastar, then please do this now. Simply follow the installation guide and then get back here. I also recommend that you have at least some knowledge about how to work with the basic Blender tools. However I will try to keep the tutorial as simple as possible. So. Let's start. Creating a Navistar character is really easy. Ensure that you are in object mode. Optionally remove the default cube. Then navigate to, add, Avastar. And after a few seconds your new Avastar is born at the current cursor location. This character is 100% compatible to the second life avatar. It is made out of several parts. The head, with separate eyes and eyelashes. The upper body. And the lower body. The Avastar character even provides a hair wig, and a skirt template, but these parts are currently hidden. We will get back to them later. The meshes are fully rigged to an advanced Second Life compatible skeleton. But for now you only need to know that the skeleton, which is also named Armature, is currently shown as a set of circles surrounding the Avastar shape. But don't worry, the skeleton is our secret star here, and thus we will put a lot of our time into this later. And I will explain to you all the details just in time when they are needed. It is also notable that this character is compatible with the Second Life skin textures, Actually this is the exact replica of the Second Life character in Blender. You even can use the character to create your own unique skins. However I will keep all of this for a later tutorial. Let's take only one step at a time, keep things easy for now, and turn back to the basic features. Okay, the Avastar character is always initially created with the default female avatar shape but we can change this as well. So now it is time to get hands on the shape sliders. The shape sliders are located in the armature's object properties. Please ensure that the armature is selected and appears in a bright orange color. Then look on the right side of the blender screen. There you find the property editors. Look at the icon bar at the top of the window. The bar starts with a camera icon for the scene's render options. A bit further to the right you find a small cube icon, the symbol for the object properties editor. The shape sliders are located here. Scroll down the panel area until you find the avatar shape panel. Now I already told you that Avastar is 100% compatible to the second life avatar. And this includes the avatar shape sliders which you use for modifying your Second Life avatar shape. Well, the shape sliders here do the same job in Blender. Okay, let's examine the sliders in more detail. So we find a section selector here. The sections specify slider groups which are dedicated to specific parts of the avatar. By default the body part is expanded, but you can change this at any time. To the right of the section selector we find a check mark labeled with male. So this is the gender selector, and if you enable this option, then the Avastar character instantly changes its shape to the second life default male character. You find the shape sliders directly below the section selector. The displayed set of sliders directly corresponds to the selected section. Here you have a few options. First you can slide the values with your mouse by clicking the left mouse key, then while holding the key down, you can drag the mouse sideways. You release the mouse to set the new value. As soon as you have moved the slider, 
a new icon shows up on the right side. This icon indicates that the slider has been touched. You can click on this icon to reset the slider back to its second life default value. If you want to reset an entire slider section to its default values, then you can click on the reset icon in the top row of the slider section. And if you want to reset the entire character to its default values, then we provide a global reset function in the shape functions section. Simply press on the button, set shape to default. By the way, if you ever want to revert a change, then pressing Ctrl Z repeatedly, will step back in history. Now let's modify our shape a bit and use some of the shape sliders to make a small troll or a dwarf, or whatever you like. Just to see the shape sliders in action. Okay, that should be enough for the demonstration. So let's take another look into the shape sliders section. Here we find two very special slider groups, the changed sliders and the skeleton sliders. The first slider group is easy to understand, this group simply contains the set of changed sliders. The other group contains the set of sliders which directly modify the skeleton. This group becomes interesting when you are working on mesh attachments. Okay, so eventually our mesh character is defined. What next? Well, now it is time to export the character. And this is done with the Kalata exporter. You find the Kalata exporter in the tool shelf. So let's open the tool shelf now. And locate the section named Custom Mesh. Okay. This section is empty, but hold on, it's named Custom Mesh but we still have the armature selected. So maybe we only need to select the meshes which we want to export. Let's select the head, the upper body, and the lower body of our character. Yes, now the Custom Mesh section in the tool shelf gets populated with function panels. For now we are only interested in the first panel, which is labeled as Export to Second Life. That sounds exactly like what we want to do now. So let's take a very brief look at the options here. First look at the modifiers. Well we do not have any for now, so let's skip that. What about textures? Okay, we also have no textures, so skip that as well. And what's up with other? Keep hands off that, this is advanced stuff. You do not want to change that unless you are an expert. So what now? Well, nothing to select or set here. Just export the meshes and that's it. Okay, this sounds like good news, so let's now click on the Kalata button. A file selection menu pops up. Select a convenient location for your export file. Right now all what Avastar will do is exporting a single file for you. However, later the tool might export many more files. So it may be wise to already get used to always export into a dedicated directory. Let's create a new directory for this character, named my mesh. And finally specify the name of the exported file, which I choose to be mymesh.dae in our case. So it is this file which we will later upload to Second Life. Please note that Avastar always exports the skeleton along with the meshes. Finally let's also store the project into a Blender project file, so that we can always get back here even after we restarted Blender.
navigate to file, save as, and then proceed as before. Only this time we store to a blend file instead of a collada file. Now, finally, let's turn our attention to Second Life. <laughs>